Thank you, Sage. Welcome south. Yeah. We call in the west, the grandparents from the west, and all our grandmothers from the west, and all their tears from their poverty. And um, we call in all the emotions of and all the lakes and the rivers and the oceans and the clouds and the rain that washes us clean. Um, our emotions are the heart of our being. They're allowed. They're okay. They are sound. And they are our access to healing. And we invite the West. Welcome, West. Holy Spirit. Water is life. And we invite the North with a sharp sense of direction. And that sense of knowing and being sure, even though we've been told that we're not supposed to be sure about anything as women and people that aren't white men. And we, um, we invite all of these grandparents, all the spirits, everything from a million generations, from a million feet down into the earth. We invite all the forces of the North today to come in and heal us. The eagle, the broad perspective, and all the medicine that we don't even know about from the North. Welcome North. And now we invite all the spirits from above, all our grandmothers, and all their pain and all the bank accounts they didn't get to open. And their husbands that's even sat next to them that were concerned about why they had to co-sign for them to get a credit card. And we invite all the stars and all the spirits from infinite past and the infinite future because the world is new for us every day. We don't know what's up there. We welcome the powers of above. Welcome above. above. And then if any folks feel like it, you can touch the ground right now if you're able to. With both your hands or one hand, if you feel like it, you can stand up and lean over. We're going to feel into the earth and invite all the energy from the drumbeat of life. It's down there that's holding us, holding our feet in place, holding us and our counting minds as we try to figure out what's in our bank account every day and try to stay grounded in the matters of the earth, even though we're all so much infinite soul inside of us. We need your support, earth, and we know you need us. We're here for each other. We're a team. We're all a team together, all of us living beings in this amazing network of life. Welcome all the ancestors and all the spirits from below. Welcome below. Mm. And now touch your bellies if you feel like it. We're going to invite in the spirits from inside of us. And you can breathe in. Just feel your really tender body. It's amazing. Mm, there's so many things that we need to think about in our minds. But... We invite the feelings of our body. We invite all the miraculous healing that's available because of the mechanisms and the technologies, the extraordinary technologies established millions of years ago that is our body. Welcome the spirits within us. Welcome within. Thank you. So I think that should get us a lot of helpers here today. Yes, please. Welcome to the unseen. We couldn't have done this without our sponsors. We're really grateful. I'm going to um, let Shonda introduce our sponsors. I'm Jacqueline Riki. I'm really glad to be with you here today. And um, I co produced this event with Shonda Williams and Kimberly Pierce and the Vermont Kindness Project. I'm so, so excited that you made it. Thank you, guys. Here's Shonda Williams. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Shonda Williams, and I'm co-visionary for this event. Uh, you may have seen me with Lost Nation Theater. Uh, you may have seen me with Montpelier Community Gospel Choir, uh, the Vermont Kindness Project with Kimberly Pierce. Those are just a few of the organizations that I belong to. Also, My Grandmother's Hands uh, with the Everything Space, and Dr. Opayemi is here today. So I want to acknowledge uh, the powerful people that are here in the room. And so we want to um, acknowledge our sponsors first. Uh, 
the Abenaki people who we are on ceded land, so I think it's important to acknowledge them. Um, also, we have Capstone Community Action is here today. That's actually our next presenter. Um, and we have Lori Kozar and Margaret Ferguson, who just retired after, what, 35 years? Tw 23 years of, let's give her a hand. That's amazing. Because I don't really think anybody stays at a job these days for 20-something years. Most people are bouncing around. It's really, really interesting. Uh, we also want to acknowledge National Life is here. Can you just stand up and say hello to everybody? That's Anne. And I guess Crystal, she, she may be taking a bathroom break. Okay. Uh, we also want to acknowledge the Donahue Foundation. Um, Senator Perchlick was going to be here today, but I guess he hasn't come in yet. Um, and I also see Liz Sharp is here from Capstone. Hey. Um, oh, hey, Rosie. Yay. Well, welcome. And we also have Empower Transformation, Ray Carter, who's here. Ray, want to? Yeah. Thank you for that. And um, an economy of our own, a very special lady, Ricky Gard Diamond, the author of Screwnomics and Public Banking Vermont is here. Ricky. Yes. Yes, and her books are going to be available for sale today. So uh, please take advantage of that. I'm in the process of reading it now. Uh, we are also doing the Public Banking Vermont Group, which has been powerful in my life as an African-American woman, um, being open to these doors uh, after you know the, the blocks are being lifted from the institutional racism that I've experienced for most of my life. So um, you know it's, it's a very powerful thing. And uh, last but not least, Amy Cavanaugh and the Montpelier Community Gospel Choir Volunteers. Raise your hands, people. Yeah. Olivia? Where's Olivia? Oh, she's at the table. Yeah, that was the lady with the, with the curly hair who greeted you today. So, um, you know, thank you for everybody for just pitching in and supporting us. We really, really appreciate it. And uh, just want to say, like, um, as an African-American woman who... Uh, recently has migrated to Vermont, and I'm here just like five years. I've just learned to be open to some of the um, different modalities of thinking and getting out of my traditional mindset. So, um, you know, you might see things today that are just, you know, it's not the norm. And I think that's for me, it's taken a lot to get out of the norm because the norm has not really helped me and getting out of that patriarchal norm and making my own normal. So I just invite you all to be open-minded, to be present today. And if something just feels odd to you, like it's a little too hippy-dippy, just I've learned to just go with it. Just go with it. Because, I mean, I really feel it has put me on a more positive trajectory. So I'm like, okay, don't bash it. Just keep an open mind. Go with it. And uh, so I promise it's going to be for the better. Okay? All right. So let's get started with uh, mine and Jacqueline's story. Um, so, Jacqueline, do you want to just... No? Okay. All right, so this all started with an email, okay? And I want to say, I just want to, you know, start the trajectory. It all uh, started with an email with uh, OPME, Dr. OPME Parham, and putting us together to talk about money. I don't even remember what the email was about exactly, but uh, it facilitated a conversation about money and class. And then... Jacqueline reached out to me and she says, would you like to, you know, 
open up an event to talk about this with other women. And I'm like, well, why not? Why not? So then I said, well, let's, you know, talk to some other people. And then it became a conversation with Kim from the Vermont Kindness Project. And then Ricky Gard Diamond with Screwnomics and the Public Banking Initiative and learning about, you know, the inequalities of women and their income. Uh, however, the state of Vermont, luckily, is, is better than most. So we should be proud to, to live here because we get a little bit more than the national average. And uh, Ricky will explain that to you later on throughout the program. Then we had Ray through Empower Transformation. And so this is, has grown into a, a, a big networking shift. So um, it all can just start from a simple conversation, and here we are. So I just wanted to acknowledge everybody who's involved, and uh, thank you. Yeah. So um, next we're going to be... Uh, having Lori Kozar. Um, she is a financial and energy coach with Green Saving Smart. She works for economic and environmental justice uh, for low and moderate income Vermonters in the Capstone Community Action Service area in central Vermont. So let's welcome Lori Kozar. Sorry, is that better? Sorry, guys. Thanks Thanks for coming out. I'm really honored to be here with so many other strong women in this room. Um, and I'm going to go a little bit off script because um, this is a little hippy-dippy, and I really dig that vibe. Um, when we're talking about finances, people can really not be hippy-dippy at all about it because it's numbers. Um, so bear with me a little bit as we dig into this. Um, my name again is Lori Kozar. I work for Capstone Community Action. We're a uh, community action agency and there are five regional agencies. So if you don't live in central Vermont area, uh, you have a Capstone, or excuse me, a community action agency. Um, we have Brock Community Action. We have CBOEO up in uh, central, or excuse me, Champlain Valley. We have NECA in the Northeast Kingdom and Southeastern Vermont Community Action. And together, these five community action agencies provide all sorts of different financial services uh, for Vermonters. We have Micro Business, uh, Rosie Manning back there, and Margaret just retired. Um, we have Vita Tax Programs. Uh, volunteers help you prepare your income taxes so that you don't have to struggle with that. Um, we have programs for children and families, Head Start, um, community building, Voices Against Violence, uh, Crisis Intervention Services for Domestic Violence in Franklin County, um, health and well-being programs like the food shelves and housing assistance. Um, and then we also have energy, uh, energy actions like the weatherization assistance program and the Green Saving Smart program, which is what I do. Um, all these diverse programs deliver support to Vermonters who are underserved, and that tends to be a lot of females and single parent head of households. So a lot of what I do is environmental justice work. Um, and that, <clears throat> is especially the weatherization and energy coaching that I do. That energy coaching is in the form of helping folks to navigate all the resources, rebates, and incentives that exist to help lower your energy burden or what you're paying for energy. And basically, this is a economic justice tactic that the state of Vermont realized that low-income Vermonters are disproportionately impacted by their energy bills. They're paying more 
percentage of their gross annual income to pay for heating their homes or for electricity for their homes. Um, weatherization is the, certainly the first step in lowering your energy burden, but there are a lot of other things that present barriers to Vermonters. And my job and the other coaches in the Green Saving Smart program at the other five community action agencies help folks navigate those programs so that they can build their economic security. And that's the economic justice part. Forward here. So why, why is that financial piece so important? And why is the energy piece so important? Those two together constitute what's called an energy burden. And I know this isn't hippy dippy when I talk about the energy burden, but I think most of us live in Vermont because we really adore the environment. Driving here today on Route 2 was stunning. And I'm always so grateful that I live in such a beautiful, beautiful environment. Um, but anyway, an energy burden is how much you spend on lighting and heating your home. And you divide that amount, you total it up, probably know what your monthly expenses are for lighting and heating your home or annual, and you divide that by your gross income. Um, and it's important to know that if that percentage that you come up with when you do that calculation is 6%, then you have a high energy burden. Um, a lot of clients that I work with one-on-one, -on -one, when we tally up what they're paying for electricity and heating oil or wood or propane, they are what's called severely burdened. So they're paying over 10% of their gross income just for heat and light. The national uh, statistics, um, it, it was a boring report and dry as, as dust, but um, the national average is 3.1%. However, for median low income folks, it's 8%. Um, and so that's right in between a high and severe energy burden. But to go back to the economic justice, this impacts low income households because they can't afford to upgrade. LED bulb, light bulbs are more expensive, uh, propane is cheaper than perhaps pellet furnaces. So low-income people tend to stick with the, the higher expense because they can't afford to upgrade the equipment in their home. Um, even with the incentives and rebates, there's still a gap, but the state of Vermont is trying really hard. And the Green Saving Smart program was funded by the legislature to try to help folks navigate all of this. So, What's really interesting about looking at the national statistics to me, and I'm a little bit of a data geek that way, is that BIPOC communities feel even more energy burdened. They're disproportionately energy burdened. 36% um, of Black households, 28% of Hispanic households, and 36% of Native American households experience high energy burdens above 6%. And we've not even touched on single parent households, which are predominantly female head of households. So on a national scale, there's a problem. And the state of Vermont is trying to lead some change there. And I really appreciate where we live. Okay, so how are Vermonters effective? Now that I've talked about the national averages, um, this graph that we're looking at here is a uh, energy affordability data graph, and it shows four economic brackets based on state median income. <clears throat> on the x-axis, you can see uh, the income, and the y-axis is the energy burden, and you see it's broken down by electricity in dark blue on the bottom, gas in green in the middle, and light blue on the top is um, for other energy sources. And there's a stark difference from the zero to 30% median state median income compared to the 100% state median income. So if you look at this graph, you can see that people who are in that 100% state median income, the higher earners, aren't paying as large a percentage for energy. And it's crucial 
that we try to impact that for our lower income neighbors and try to help everybody, lift everybody up for the energy efficiency uh, revolution that is really coming to help protect our environment. Um, and so if you think about navigating those services, I don't know if any of you have looked at, at having to navigate weatherization and the applications, it can be overwhelming. If you're looking at an electric vehicle, there are all sorts of rebates and incentives coming out, but putting it all together and figuring out what you can afford can feel really, really overwhelming. And that's where a financial and energy coach can really come in handy. Uh, the five coaches together at the community action agencies across the state all help our clients to navigate those programs. We offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, we go through your budget. We look at everything that you are spending money on. We look at all your money in and your money out. Um, everything from what you're spending on food and heating transportation, uh, what you're paying for child care, what you're paying for your cat litter. Um, we look at everything and we figure out where your money's going and try to help you navigate and save more money, build your financial capabilities, build your financial security, and help you get some of your goals and wants and needs met. So who qualifies for this wonderful free service. So this graph up here shows uh, the qualifications to participate in our program. The first is you just must live in Vermont. So you live here and you can apply. Uh, if your income is 80% of the state median family income, we can service you. If you are of the BIPOC community or identify as a new American household, you can earn up to 120% of the state median family income. So as you see, the qualifications for Green Saving Smart, uh, we can work with a really large range of Vermonters. And it's a lot of fun to do this. Uh, before I was a coach, my, my quick story, um, I was really not interested in finances at all. You know, my background's graphic design and I'm a creative person. I was an educator for many years. Finances though, were not my strong suit. And living with some of those choices that I made when I was younger, ignoring those uh, basic future planning things have impacted me and impacted my financial security. So I enjoy helping folks navigate all the systems and programs that we have so that they can have a little bit more security. So back to what we offer. Um, as I said, the Capstone Community uh, Action Agency in Barrie serves Central Vermont, so I'm the Central Vermont Regional Green Saving Smart uh, Coach. Um, but even if you don't live in our service territory, there's another coach that I can refer you to. Um, there's a coaching specialist that is ready to help income eligibility, income eligible Vermonters, excuse me, um, help you build your financial skills. That might be building a budget. It might be managing your credit. I have a number of clients who have about 20 credit cards and they roll their debt through those credit cards to try and manage it. And it's quite a piece of work, but um, we, we whittle that down and try to help folks to, to really build the credit, build their credit scores. So if they're applying for a loan, for a, owning a home, which is really hard right now with interest rates, <laughs> if, you, if you wanna build your credit score, so that you can qualify for a prime plus loan, which is a better interest rate, um, we can help you do that. If you are interested in saving for retirement, we can help you navigate that. Um, we analyze your energy burden. If you're looking for an EV, we can help you navigate the different programs. Uh, if you're interested in heat pumps or getting off of fossil fuels, we can help you do that. Um, and if perhaps as many of my clients need other services, we also make referrals to partner agencies and programs throughout the state of Vermont. So if you need a Green Saving Smart coach, uh, if you'd like some help, please reach out to us. We can help you make decisions th that are short-term, long-term, mid-term, help you meet all of your goals and um, just make your life a little bit more easy. And I know that's not the most uh, 
woo-woo kind of hippie experience to talk about finances, but it's really, really important to get your finances under control. And it's not as hard as you think, especially if you have a coach by your side. So thanks a lot for listening to me today. I hope you guys have a wonderful uh, experience here. And Shonda and Jackie, thanks so much for inviting me to present at this event. Thank you. <clears throat> um, hopefully everybody got your love letter at the door. Um, <laughs> this, um, besides, since I was very small, reinventing every wheel without necessarily needing to, um, is an alternative to a brochure or a um, program that you might get at a normal conference. Um, and it came about because we were talking about a month ago about this event. The organizers were gathered and we were talking about how it's a movement. It's a movement. We're starting a movement. And the wonderful Ray Carter, um, who's going to be speaking next, um, she grounded us in, in the knowledge that the movement is in perpetuity. The movement is on the backs of millions of people that have worked for liberation before us. And the movement is happening. And really what we're doing today is we're in a continue, continuation of a movement. And what we're doing is building relationships. And we move and act. We have movements and activism through love. And um, so that gave me the idea to make you guys a love letter instead of a, a conference brochure. Um, and if you see on the first page... It says, hey, you, and that's for you to be able to begin a love letter to yourself today, whenever you're ready. And then as you go through the day, if you want to write more, you can just unfold it and you can be all big and you can take up space like we're not supposed to do as you spread it around and you can fold it and unfold it. And this is for you to write more and more and more love letters to yourself. And then the six of us have given you a message to take home with you because we want you to think of us like resources for you forever. We're here for you. So the six of us are a body of support and love that you can take away along with your own love for yourself. Um, so there's a lot I could say about Ray Carter, but suffice to say, she really brought the love forward for me in terms of um, what we're doing here. And you're going to learn a lot more from her yourself. I'm really, really honored. If you need a pen... Um, raise your hand and I'll walk around. These are my personal pens, so please return them at the end of the day. But if you need a pen, raise your hand. I'm going to come around um, and at the same time, let's please hear a nice warm welcome for Ray Carter. <laughs> 